So in this video, I will be talking more about the endogreen system. Uh, in part 3 and part 2 of this series, I talked about the isolates of Langerhans and the thyroid gland and pituitary gland. But in this part, in part 4, we'll focus on what happens in the pineal gland specifically. So first, what is the pineal gland? So in this diagram, like we saw above, the pineal gland is located around this position. But there is also something right below it called the SCN, and this is just your eye. So I want to talk about, to try and clarify what these two things do and what their relationship is and what their purpose is. So first we'll label it, we'll label, label the diagram. So the thing more in the center, like I said, is the pineal gland. And the part right below it is known as the SCN. Now what do they do? So in short, the pineal gland is the gland in your brain that produces hormones that control your sleep-awake cycle, your eating and your sleeping cycle. So they will make certain hormones that will make you hungry, make certain hormones that will make you want to sleep, certain hormones that will make you want to wake up. That's what they do. But the SCN is the part of your brain that sort of controls this one. So it is in charge of setting your internal clock. So um, your daily habits is in charge of setting that. So it will tell this guy when to produce the hormones. And it, this guy can be influenced by various things. There, you sort of have an internal clock. But think about it. If, say, you were to be in your house and it'd be purely dark, you can't see anything, how would you know when to be awake? How, like, you, you'll notice that your body doesn't know when, when it has to be awake and when it has to be asleep. You, you, like, you may feel awake at 2 in the morning, even though it's super dark. Or you may, may feel awake um, or really tired at 2 in the afternoon when, you don't, when there's no light. So the SEN is influenced. It sort, of has a, it sort of sets your body in an internal clock, but it certainly is influenced by environmental factors such as light, like I just mentioned. So, to visually explain it, when light is perceived, so when you wake up in the morning or in the day or whenever, your body will, the, SC, the SCN will tell the pineal gland, so the SCN is sort of like the boss, it will tell the pineal gland, okay, make a hormone that will wake him up, wake this guy up. So the hormone that will wake people up is serotonin. Melatonin is the hormone that makes you want to go to sleep. So when, when it sees light, it will make sure the body does not make any more melatonin. It will make sure that goes away and it only makes serotonin. On the, on the, on the contrary, when, there's, when it's nighttime, obviously there's no light, right? There's no, um, it's dark. So your body doesn't have any light that it sees. So this time, it, the SCN will tell the pineal gland, to not make serotonin anymore, convert serotonin into melatonin instead. So melatonin is a sleepy hormone, that's why it's kind of dark blue. This one is light blue, so um, melatonin is the one that makes you want to sleep. So when, it's, when, it, when there's no light, the SCN will tell the pineal gland to make the sleeping hormone, melatonin. And when there is light, the SCN will tell the pineal gland to make the awake hormone, serotonin. The reason why I highlighted um, uh, those in yellow is because M you can think of it's the midnight hormone it's produced in the midnight or the nights when you're sleeping it's a sleepy hormone and S is produced in the sunny conditions S for sunny when you're awake that's just an easy way to kind of remember um, which one does which one is released when and what its purpose is okay now that you know what their basic purpose is let's go over this little story. I want to tell you a story about this guy. His name is Jeff, yeah? And you can see this is how a typical day looks like. 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 6 in the afternoon, in the night, um, and midnight. So he, let's pretend it's 6 o'clock and he just woke up. And why did he wake up? Right, because the sun will send light into his eyes and cause the SCN gland to tell the pineal gland to make um, serotonin 
and take away melatonin. Uh, melatonin. Yeah, exactly. So in the morning, the CS, CSN goes in his eyes, converts melatonin into serotonin because serotonin is the awake hormone. You don't want melatonin anymore because that's a sleepy hormone. So that's what it does, not make serotonin. So let's say he keeps going on with his day and eventually it reaches 12 o'clock, right? So what do you think is going to happen now? Now you're at your most awake, right? So you would suspect that your melatonin levels are at their lowest and serotonin levels are really high, right? Let's see if that's correct. Yes, so your melatonin levels is at the lowest level at this point because this is the point of the day when you're least tired. And that's because your body's making, your pineal gland specifically, is making no none of these or the lowest level of these. Now you continue your day on and now it reaches 6 at night. What do you expect? Jeff is now at 6 at night. What do you expect is going to happen now? So you're supposed to start getting tired now. So what you can expect is that your body, your pineal gland, is now making more melatonin slowly and less serotonin. So it's starting to convert, starting to convert the serotonin into melatonin. Um, and that's correct. So because there's less light, remember the light affects that a lot. It's a big impactor. Your SCN has an internal schedule, but it's very dramatically affected by light. Light can basically influence it a lot. So because there's less light now, serotonin, um, the SCN, Remember, the SEN will tell the pineal gland to make less serotonin and more melatonin. This is preparing your body for sleep. So now it's getting very late. Now he actually went to sleep. He got on his bed and he's now sleeping. And now it reaches midnight. So what do you suspect will, will it be like at midnight if he's sleeping? So now you can suspect that it's at its highest point because now it's now you're dead asleep. You're not going to wake up for anything. And again, that's because there's no light. It's making the your body's make your pineal gland is making the most melatonin that it can. Yeah. So melatonin levels in the blood are at the highest. So as you can see in this diagram, your melatonin levels are kind of in contrast with your serotonin. Whenever your melatonin is lowest, your serotonin will be highest. But I know for the IV, you kind of just have to focus on the melatonin. So just think about when it's light, your body wants to make, um, does not want to make melatonin. And when it's dark, it does. Because melatonin is the midnight, M for midnight hormone. It's the hormone that makes you want to sleep. So if you can remember it like that, it should be fine. And by the way, in my videos, um, I'm going into all the details that you need to know. So don't worry about researching anymore. Because if you know this information, you can, there's no reason why you can't score, score very high. Now, the last thing that you need to know is something called jet lag. Jet lag, this is pretty much an image that sums up how you feel during jet lag. You have no way, your body does not know what time it is. It does not know how it should feel because maybe it's, uh, it's bright outside, but you're tired. Maybe it's dark outside, but you're awake. And the reason why you feel jet lag is because you're, you travel too fast to a new time zone and your body was not able to adapt or adjust um, to make the hormones so you feel the way your environment is. Because remember, you're feeling different from your environment. And I said before how your SCN um, in, it gets influenced by the environment to make you produce the right hormones. But if your environment changed so fast, your body couldn't do it fast enough, so you're feeling a bit out. So you're, this, this means it will just take a couple of days for your body to make the right hormones again and get you in the right momentum. But if you want to have a faster solution, there is obviously drugs, one by the name of melatonin. Again, it's the same drug we just learned about that your body makes for itself. But since your body is not making it because it it's adjusts, it's used to its internal clock, so it's used to making melatonin at a certain time. But if you travel to a different time zone, it will make the melatonin at the wrong time, right? It will make it at a time that it uh, that that the new time zone isn't suited for. So if you want to adjust that, then you have to take melatonin when at night, or a bit before you sleep, so that you are tired um, because your body won't make it by itself. It'll take a couple of days to adjust and then make it again according to the schedule you're in. So that's pretty much what jet lag is. It's just disrupting your body's internal clock. And you have to wait a few days because your body will get back. It's a way of homeostasis, right? It's adjusting, getting back to how it's supposed to be. But melatonin can solve that problem. Now let's go to some IB questions. Um, these are, again, just two questions. Couldn't find many. Um, but they should be quite simple. These, um, these are uh, multiple choice questions. So right now I'll just show you the whole thing. So you can pause and see if you want to try 29 before I do it.
Okay, so which hormone controls circadian rhythms? So we just learned circadian rhythms is your sleep and eat cycle, but we just learned about sleep. So let's go down. Could it be thyroxine? If you watched my previous video, you'd know thyroxine is all about metabolism um, and growth if you're a child and all that. So check that out to make sure that you understand what thyroxine is. So we know that this one is not relevant to your sleeping rhythms because it's all about metabolism. Melatonin, yes, we just learned this one. This is the midnight hormone. It's a sleepy hormone, makes you want to sleep. So this definitely can control it if you have this. Leptin, this again, um, this is not relevant. This is more about breaking down fats. It's a hormone that helps you break down fats and all that. Um, if you want to know what this is, check out my other video that explains this hormone. And then lastly, glucagon. Again, this is not a hormone relevant to circadian rhythms. This one is about um, your blood glucose levels. If you want to, and again, I made a video so you can check this out make sure, if you want to make sure you want to understand this. So yeah, the only one relevant is melatonin. And remember, these videos that I'm making, these questions, um, I didn't pick any easy questions. These are all questions um, randomly picked, so I'm not making it easy on purpose. This is just how it is. Um... So how can knowledge, okay, I'll show you the question first so you can try it, pause. So how can knowledge about the pineal gland function be applied? So we know what the pineal gland is. It makes these sleeping and awake hormones. And S, the SCN is affecting it. So how can we, so the question is saying, with the knowledge about pineal gland, how can it be applied? So let's see A. So it says to restore sleep time by the use of melatonin. This sounds, this sounds like it could be an answer. It's getting you back to sleep by using melatonin. Yeah, and most melatonin is the sleep hormone. So yeah, that'd be logical. To trigger ovulation, now nah, this, the pineal gland does not um, make anything to do with ovulation, make any hormones to do with that. That comes from the um, other places in your body. And the sperm production, yeah, again, this is uh, evolved in reproduction. Your pineal gland is not part of that. To re regulate blood sugar in type 2 diabetes, no, the pineal gland does not do that. Um, it's actually the isolates of Langerhans, which I talked about in my, in my other video, that um, regulates your blood sugar. So the pineal gland is not part of that. So the trick in this question is basically, do you know what the pineal gland does? Because all of these things are correct, but obviously the pineal gland has only one function. It doesn't do all of these. So And the function is um, A. So I hope you understood and learned something in this video. Um, if you have questions, just yeah, just don't don't worry to ask in the comments.